town you never heard of. Hey everybody, welcome to the Common Folk Podcast with Ben, Morgan, and Andy. Man, welcome back to Common Folk. Yes, sir. Howdy. Burgett there on the intro. I like his stuff. I really do. He's a pianist. He is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty unique uh, in the country music world. There's not a lot of people with piano as like their primary right. deal, um, but that's always been his thing. He, mm-hmm. he runs around and does a bunch of like concerts um, and has his piano right in the back of his pickup truck. Oh, always. That yeah. is cool. I like his short videos. You know, he's really active on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere yeah, else, is, you know, yeah. and if you start following him in one area, you know, that usually bleeds over. So, and then when I do see those short videos, I, I have to watch them. Yeah. You know, so Does he play them. guitar though too? Do you think? I assume so. I guess I haven't seen him play it, but we haven't seen him live. So yeah. he, pro- he probably yeah. does. Yeah. Cause I always see him on the piano, which a, I love. Yeah. He's always big yeah. piano. Yeah. yeah. Well, so is he coming around here? Are we going to get to see him or? He's, he's got a lot of stuff planned and he said he's going to be up in our area before long. So. Well, he did that small towns tour last summer, and I was, you know, I was crossing my fingers, hoping he would yeah. pick somewhere in Nebraska, and maybe this is the summer. Maybe he'll maybe, end, maybe. he'll end up around here sometime. He's in uh, Nashville, but originally from Illinois, and his family farms in Illinois. Um, just a good dude. We've done a lot of stuff with him on the farm focus side of mm-hmm. things. Yep. Um, we've done some merchandise for him, but he he sports the gear because he's a farm kid. Right. So it's pretty neat. No, it's a good deal, and I love that intro. It fits us fairly well. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of his uh, songs. Um, And then obviously he did um, the voice intro for us. So pretty Mm -hmm. cool of him to do that. Yep. Good voice. Yes. Good voice. Okay. So So, Eric Burgett, check him out. Definitely. Um, As we're talking about concerts, can I talk about how I just heard Luke Bryant is coming to Murdoch? Oh. In September. Wow. I'm not kidding. Oh, is that that, field, field, that field tour that he does? Oh, yeah. okay. Got to go. Right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's only doing like That's six cool. or seven. And, and what's Murdoch, a town of 200? Like nothing. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Yeah, I'm pumped. So we, I don't know when tickets go on sale, but are you looking it up? Um, yeah. It's September something, so we all got to go. Write it down. Let's do it. Now okay. that you say that, I do remember them talking about that. Yeah, Murdoch. September 22nd. Is that Pretty crazy, cool. that is, Andy? I mean, that is what is the town of Murdoch? A thousand, if that? No, it's, it's not, not even that. that. It's, it's not a thousand, is it? I don't think so. Sure? I don't know. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I did call a basketball game there once. Did um, you? Yep. I yep. went to preschool or uh, daycare growing up there. Okay. My mom used to teach. Wow, look at all Elmwood these Murdoch. Yeah. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. This. What does it say? What's the town you never heard of? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> 256. Oh, See? shoot. I was way off. That was 2020. And if you... Uh, if you look at the like Google Maps or Google Earth, yeah. you know, because I, you know, I wanted to make sure I was going to the right gymnasium for this basketball game we called this past season. Um, the town just like fits perfectly in a triangle where it's like cornfield, cornfield, highway, <laughs> and then Murdoch just fits perfectly. Boom! Right there, <laughs> where where the pivot doesn't reach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Let's put our town there. That's so, crazy. Uh, it's it's a great great small town, one of those small towns in Nebraska, um, and it was really cool because. Obviously, when we do big games, you know, with big Class A, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of buzz around that. Um, but I like, you know, I'm a small town kid too, um, and everyone comes out and really supports it. It the pet band was right behind us, so they were loud and blaring their, you know, instruments. I mean, it's to me what a high school should feel like because yeah. the whole town's there, and it was a rivalry game. Mm. Weeping Water was in town, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> I mean, it was just so much fun, and I, I love doing those games. And this was basketball. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, uh, cool. Girls and boys, and yeah, uh, I think Elmwood Murdoch kind of getting off here, but uh, they were highly ranked, and Weeping Water was the defending champs. So like the girls' game actually had a little bit more buzz than the boys. Hmm. So like the crowd was already amped up. You know, as soon as tip off started for the girls. That's so small town. It was awesome. It was so much fun. I mean, fun. I guess even where we grew up is not super small town. Right. Bellevue. But it reminds me of just those games. And yeah. Everyone just gets into it. Oh, man. Yeah. You're old Thunderbirds. <laughs> you guys had a pretty good run there. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> what are you zooming in on there? Ben? Uh, I was just looking here. So it said um, 256 people, which makes it the 200. 
and 95th largest city in Nebraska. That's one way to put it. Okay, that's <laughs> weird. I now, now Bellevue, talking about Bellevue, they just overtook uh, Grand Island as the second largest city in Nebraska. Did this they? Past year. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Bellevue was moving on up. I would have not mm-hmm. thought that. I thought Grand Island was still bigger. Well, and just think about all the growth out west. Yeah. You know, okay. uh, I, that, that's what's, I believe, happening. Yeah. I don't know yeah. this for a fact, but I believe, and he listens to our podcast, um, TJ, who owns Round the Bend Steakhouse. Okay. I think he's a fireman on uh, Elmwood Murdoch's department. He did talk about awesome. that when we were with Zach. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So that's kind of funny we're talking about that. But yeah, that's that's a cool deal. They're uh, going to be out at somebody's ranch out on the out in the fields. Yeah. Well, I like that. We're going to have to set that date aside and make sure we get there. Maybe I around bet, the bend. Oh, sorry. Maybe around the bend's going to do something. Oh, I bet they will. I, and most likely, um, Luke Bryan is probably going to come in to record with us. I think. Oh, he has oh, to. Oh, doesn't he? Of no, course. We are so yep. big. He so yep. knows about common folks. I'll, I'll send his people a message. <laughs> Hashtag. Who's, <laughs> yeah. who's his people? Where do we find them? Uh, Talking about big shots uh, making moves, uh, what do you want to talk about today here, Ben? Yeah, this is, we don't do a lot of um, current event stuff necessarily so far. We haven't talked mm-hmm. a lot of that, but mm-hmm. um, it's just been so so much chatter lately about this whole deal with Elon Musk buying Twitter and uh, and just in general, you know, yeah. what the guy does, who yep. he is, whatever. Yep. So we kind of thought, man, you know, let's let's bring a common folk perspective to what's going on here? Yeah, I mean it's in the namesake, and I, I think I think that's a good good idea, you know, because there's just so much chatter, and it's getting to a point where is that real? Is that fake? Now he's buying Coca Cola. Now he's buying Xerox. Like, what is going yeah, yeah, on? Yeah, all the and, things. Yeah, and what actually happened? So, um, I just kind of want to get your guys' what you've heard and what you've seen. What are your initial reactions to to this? And then I have kind of a timeline that I'm going to walk. Cool. Yeah. Walk us through and the audience through to just kind of yeah. get the bare bone facts of what has happened and what is happening. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I don't know a ton. Like, I don't love watching the news. And mm-hmm. news is always one sided. And it's not just the news. Mm-hmm. But I'll see mm-hmm. things for sure on social media. So I definitely know that he got Twitter. I mean, I don't know enough about him to have. I don't know. He just looks a little goofy. Not goofy. He just is always... <laughs> You have the picture of he just is smiling. <laughs> it's an odd smile too, and he's always kind of it's looking like off contagious. to the side. Yeah. You know? um, yeah, but it's just I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, he's a smart mm-hmm. man. How old is he? Is he our age? Uh, like he's not forty yet. Yeah, he's not too old, and, but he is the wealthiest man on the planet. And that I when I heard that, I thought that was kind of odd because you got guys like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Um, uh, descendants from Rockefellers that they've been in this game a lot longer, accumulating wealth over time. Okay. And for Elon Musk, now he's an African. He's from South Africa. Really? Okay. Yes. Yep. And um, he obviously, I think, was born into a pretty decent family that probably had some wealth. Um, uh, most white families from that part of the world in South Africa, they do have a little bit of wealth, but nothing like Warren Buffett. So the fact that he's been able to overtake these big dogs and become the wealthiest man on the planet – that caught my eye right away. So, yeah, the way I see it, you know, you talk about the Twitter thing um, specifically. I I like seeing certain things get shook up, mm-hmm. and that's one that needs to be shook up. You know, like okay. we don't, we're not going to get like overly political, but it's you know the stuff that's been going on with these social media platforms over mm-hmm. the last few years. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of people thinking. You know he's going to turn this thing on his head, on its head, and he might, and all, all that. Some of that's already started. Um, mm-hmm. So definitely, you know, let's chat a little bit about Twitter and these companies and these kinds of things. Um, you know, and the other thing with Elon Musk. I mean, the guy. You know, over the last number of years, the way that I became familiar with him was with Tesla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a car guy, and yep. following the the automotive industry and what's been going on with that. And, you know, years ago, I thought to myself, this guy's crazy, man. Like, right. I was I was watching Twitter, or I was watching uh, Tesla develop mm-hmm. and seeing, you know, documentaries on it and, and watching what's going on with them and how much money they're losing and all these kinds yeah. of things. And I just thought, man, you know, 
good for him to have like this vision that no one else has because uh-huh. everyone thought it was going to fail and he just stuck with it. Now, on the other hand, he was also able to stick with it because of the amount of money that he had, mm-hmm. but they were hemorrhaging money. Yeah. And now, you know, you fast forward today, I don't know that Tesla is profitable or not. They're probably close to it if they're, they're not. one of two auto manufacturers that had, that were profitable the last couple of years. Okay. Really? Yeah. Um, but they have set the standard in the, you know, electric, electrically powered vehicle right. industry. With that type of battery. Yeah. yeah. And, and just with their innovation and their, you know, commitment to bringing something to market mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. everything that they've done, like almost everybody, even the big guys are chasing them. Yeah. Well, and, and Elon said, because you, you hit the nail on the head, they were hemorrhaging money. It looked like a terrible idea, like everyone kind of mm-hmm. said and was poking fun at him. He took three years of his life and lived at that factory. And he said it was the worst three years of his life. He was sleeping on the floor. Now, think about the commitment there from the world's richest man. He could just cut stock, walk away, and be fine. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of billionaires, millionaires do that. Like, oh, we gave it a shot, you know. Uh, but he didn't. He followed through actually was sleeping on the floor, putting in crazy amounts of time and effort. And that also showed everybody at Tesla, like, if I'm willing to put in this type of effort, sure. you know, it kind of yeah. rallied, you yep. know, the troops, if you will. Yep. So I think when you see that type of commitment and drive from an individual, uh, maybe maybe you shouldn't be so surprised that he's at the top. Yeah, not, <laughs> you know not, what I mean? Not just throwing money at it. Exactly. There. Physically working on the projects, you know, physically being invested as well. I mean, he had shareholders breathing down his neck, like you sold us on this, we invested in you and look at your stock. It's, it's way, way in the red right now, Mm -hmm. you know? So he Mm -hmm. had to figure it out and he did. And he didn't take that lightly and just shrug his shoulders and go, oh, well, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, playing with somebody else's money. I think, I think that's another thing too, what you mentioned there, you know, stock. So you've got these shareholders, you've got these people saying Mm -hmm. the stock prices, the stock prices, you know, and that's (laughs) one of the things that we're going to get into to about Twitter that yes, I really is. want to talk about. Um, but it seems to me that his mentality is like, so, right. You know, so yeah. the stock price, whatever we, we, we have a goal, we have a mission. This is what we're working on. He's, you know, it'll, it'll catch up. Yeah. Uh, he is a visionary. Um, yeah. and he does take that effort mentality yeah. Yeah. a lot of yeah. times, especially if he has conviction and if he believes in something, I don't know how he does it, but he makes it happen. Whatever yeah. it is, going to space, <laughs> making True. electric cars. Yeah. It just doesn't matter. Solar panels. Yeah. So uh, the, the next thing with him, you know, that I've got familiar with Elon Musk is SpaceX. You mm-hmm. know, you mentioned that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, shoot, we could probably talk for hours about the space program right. in the United States, but for whatever reason, NASA all but shuts down yeah. in one way or another, yeah. uh, you know, leaves a void for the uh, the private sector. Yep, the private sector to come in and start doing something. He steps up and starts doing it. And he's doing it so much more efficiently, faster, quicker. You almost have more confidence in SpaceX than you do in NASA, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, well, and let me ask, why did NASA pull back a little bit? I don't even know that. Is there I, well, you talk about shareholders. I think it was kind of a one of those deals where there's so much money in the political world going to NASA, and it kind of became popular to say, uh, "Why are we wasting so much money on NASA? Let's put it here. Let's oh, put it there." I okay. think I think that's that was kind of my that's bare bones, part of it, you know, yeah. understanding of it. You got to make cuts to make budget somewhere, and NASA over the years got was cut. just kind of a yeah. And I, in the in the little bit that I've seen. Um, you know, they they more or less shut it down. Like at least they pulled a bunch of money out of it, and the United States com- was completely falling behind. Yeah. In what's going on in space. Yeah. Well, and the the big announcement I think that you're kind of rallying to there is uh, NASA came out with a uh, a statement a few years ago that they were going to stop putting astronauts into space, and that, I mean that's a huge step backwards when you're talking about in 1969 we put people on the moon Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you fast forward to 2018 or 2017 whenever that uh with that press release was made now we're not going to send anybody even into orbit like what are we doing Mm -hmm. you know that's totally going backwards as a nation as a planet you know so that was pretty shocking and like you said though that opened the door kind of for guys like elon musk and and the private sector to say like well if you're not going to do it I will, mm-hmm. you know, but, mm-hmm. uh, so let's get back to Twitter. I want to walk mm-hmm. us down a timeline here 
of what happened and what developed. So all of our listeners have a good understanding that, you know, it's not this clickbait. It's not that. We're just going to walk through this timeline. Okay. This will be good for me too. So we're going to start January 31st of this year. Okay. Okay. Elon starts buying stock in Twitter. Now he's quietly doing this. Um, he's not making a big deal about it. Nobody really realizes it. Um, and he ends up with a uh, pretty quick 5% of, of Twitter. Um, then on March 24th, so from January 31st on, he just, he's buying stock. He's buying just slowly. stock. And that doesn't raise any red flags because a guy like Elon Musk, he'll, he'll buy a ton of stock in this, that, uh, like <laughs> when you're talking cryptocurrencies, man, he's always moving money mm -hmm. and buying and dumping. So no one even raised an eyebrow, but the SEC, they took notice and like, okay, he's, he's already got 5% what's going on. And what really started to shake things up was on March 24th, he starts sending out critical tweets about Twitter, why he's simultaneously buying more and more stock. Uh, one that he wrote was, worried about de facto bias in the Twitter algorithm having a major effect on public. Twitter algorithm should be open source. And what he's saying there, uh, if you're going to feed me this line, I'm not saying lie, uh, this line, uh -huh. I should at least know how that got there, who put that there. Um, if, I, if I click on, let's say, Donald Trump and I follow Donald Trump Jr., Okay, that tells the algorithm that I'm going to want more right-wing, uh, pro-gun type of material. So at least the algorithm's open source, and I know why that line is put in front of me. Uh -huh. Twitter doesn't share that. They hide everything. So you don't know, you know, <laughs> but do other why platforms? you're being... No, they, they hide too. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were talking. Okay. I think what what the reason why this has kind of been the target is because Twitter has become like the predominant uh, voice in social media. I mean, yeah. person after person after person, right. if you ask them if they're really on it, um, that's where they get all their news. Yeah. yeah. So then there's this fear of what is what they're getting. Legit. Yeah. And complete. Yeah. And, and is it both sides and are they, or are they yeah. just getting, or are they in an echo chamber? So you're you know? ex exactly right. A day later, March 25th, then Elon tweets out, free speech is essential to a functioning democracy. Do you believe Twitter rigorously adheres to this principle? This is just an open poll, a yes or no. And this is when people started flipping out on Twitter and Elon Musk. Cause now the band aid has been ripped off. We see he's buying shares. We see mm -hmm. he's buying stock. And he's straight up sending out a poll where, I mean, it was overwhelmingly, you know, 78% yeah. people yeah. saying, yeah. no, it's not fair. Um, right. You have a lot of uh, right-leaning, whether it's a professional athlete, actors, actresses um, that just have a right-wing type of a stance here or there. They're being shadow banned, meaning all their followers aren't allowed to see their tweets. I mean, that's mm -hmm. right there, mm -hmm. right there. Yep. That's part of the open source not you know, being available and at least allowing me to know that I'm not seeing that because of this or that, mm -hmm. you know, and, right. and the big rub is this is a publicly traded company. Mm -hmm. So that all falls on this board that's making these oh. decisions. Usually if it's public money, you know, it's part of the stock market, you should be a little bit more open yeah. with your decisions. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a private company or it wasn't. Right. And, um, but it was being run like a private company. Yeah. And, and that's, so that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about with, with what's happened if we're ready to get to this point. Okay. Let me, let, I'll, I'll just yeah, speed going. fire down yep. this. So then April 4th. Okay. Um, this is where Elon buys a bunch more. Um, and he, at this point he has 9% of the company and he's the, he's the largest, uh, stockholder in the world at 9%. Now he can really throw his weight around. Um, and there's a lot of companies that like were bought in as well, like lumped their money together, mm -hmm. but he was even bigger than all these other mm -hmm. companies that Jeez. had stock. Uh, so now, and now he's starting to get even more um, critical of Twitter, sending out some tweets like, well, what do you guys think of this? Do you think this is right? Do you think that is right? And it's, it's annoying 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a knowing yeah. Twitter right, in their board, right. yep. uh, to say the least. Well, and you talk, you talk <clears throat> about like some of those other companies, just for some clarification, that are heavy stockholders, heavy shareholders in that company. Mm-hmm. Um, I think most of them are... Uh, what 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 do you call them? They're uh, they're like groups, right? Like uh, Vanguard. Yep, like yep. Vanguard or BlackRock or whoever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That there's lots of individuals like all of us here that own stock through Vanguard's purchasing. Right. So then Vanguard's like the big the big buyer there, but really it's not one person. It's thousands it's, and thousands of people. Yeah, it's a collective. It's a group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a collective. Yeah. Right. Yep. Where with Musk, it's just him. Just one mm-hmm. owning that. So when that happened, when he bought that 9%, uh, that is when uh, Twitter reached out and tried to get in front of it and invited him to be part of the board. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, Then April 5th, uh, Elon says, okay, um, I guess that's what happens. Um, So he kind of says um, that he's going to accept that and be a a seat on the board and he's going to make changes in this and that. Well, he figures out real quick, like, that if he um, accepts that board seat, then he cannot own more than 14, 14 and a half percent of the company. And he's very limited as to what he can do. Oh, so they did that on purpose, knowing that. Right. Too. Oh, come right. On. So okay. so Elon says, hell with that. And April 9th just straight up says that tweets it out that he rejected the seat on the board. He doesn't want to be part of the board. He wants to be bigger than the board. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, this was another big part of the shadow banning in real time. He told them uh, April 5th or 6th, I'm not accepting that seat. He said it directly to the CEO of Twitter. I'm not accepting that seat because I I don't want to be limited as to what I can do. And I'll be very limited as to how much stock I can buy, the decisions I can make. I'll be outvoted on everything, you know, you other Mm -hmm. eight or nine guys. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not accepting that seat. They squashed that story. They did not allow that to get out all the way up until April 9th when it finally did just break. And that was another thing that just set the Twitter sphere on fire mm-hmm. and all these other outlets that, you know, cover that have been covering this story that finally became public knowledge April 9th that he rejected that board seat. Uh, so then you fast forward, uh, a lot of speculation, more crazy tweets from April 10th and 11th. Um, April 14th was the big one. That is where Elon Musk made his initial offer for $43 billion to buy Twitter. So, and at that time, their stock was dropping, dropping, dropping. Uh, and because what, of what's going on and people yeah. being annoyed with yep. the shadow ban and, you know, all the stuff. You're exactly okay. right. You're exactly right. Now, he made an offer, that $43 billion, that came to $54.20 a share. That was 54% higher than what that stock was worth. And so that's a no-brainer. If I'm a shareholder in Twitter... Yes, this is like a golden ticket for me. I, I've been holding on to this stock. It's been dropping. It's been dropping. It's been dropping. I don't agree with how things are being run, even if I am left, you know, winged, liberal, whatever. Um, uh, as an investor, I hate to see I'm losing money. And here's an opportunity to get all of it back and more. This is an insane offer. This is where then a day later, this is where it shows you how bad it really was. April 15th. Twitter adopts what was called the poison pill. And that was to go ahead and allow current shareholders to basically buy more shares at a far discounted price, just making shares up basically and splitting them. Um, And that would devalue all the shares, the 9% that Elon had at the Uh time. So then he wouldn't have all the clout. He couldn't uh, throw his weight around near as much. And I just think that says something right there where a company is willing to kill itself rather than be owned by an eccentric guy that's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. pro free speech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, a couple days later, uh, April 16th, that's where Vanguard got all their people together and bought ten a total of 10.3%, making them the largest shareholder. Uh, Elon Musk, <laughs> I don't know how he does this, uh, but then he out leverages them. He gets Morgan Stanley on his side to go ahead and help leverage a deal, makes up another offer to up to $46.5 billion. Now investors, shareholders are telling Twitter, knock it off, knock yeah. it off. I don't want to dilute my stock. I want to sell my stock. Mm-hmm. What, are you, what are we doing here? And this is where Elon is playing chess and idiot board members. 
yeah. that, that, are, that are making $250,000 a year by doing nothing but saying, I don't like this guy. I right, like that right. guy, you know, yeah. and maybe go to a couple meetings a year, you know. Um, that's where uh, they're just so far behind the game and they couldn't even see the writing on the wall that – Oh, okay, we have to adhere to shareholders at some time here. We're a publicly traded company. I don't know if they understood that, you know. Right. Uh, and uh, there, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of smart people on that board. Jack Dorsey, one of the co-founders of Twitter, uh, owned the next most amount uh, personally. But he only he owned less than 3%. Um, and it word got out that he was going to sell out, sell his shares. And he, that was another huge tweet that Elon sent out through all of this melee was – once Jack Dorsey leaves the board, and that was going to happen in at May, in May 25th, um, the the remaining board members of Twitter own less than like 1% of the company. So mm. he goes, huh. right there, the goals and aspirations of the board are not the same as the shareholders. There's going to be problems. Mm-hmm. Like he called that out. Yeah. And then he showed, he showed the world that that's exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> like, hey guys, I said that two months ago right. uh, and here you go. I'm showing it to you in real time. Um, then uh, let's see here. After that uh, next bid and he got the backing, um, April 24th, the board holds some closed discussions and that's when uh, the announcement comes out April 25th that us Musk is going to buy Twitter. It's been accepted. Too much pressure, um, and it and it's happened. So Elon Musk now owns Twitter. The deal will be done uh, in 2022, and they off uh, Twitter agreed to his original offer of fifty four dollars and twenty cents a share. That was fifty four percent higher than what the shares were at the time, and that ended up being about a forty four billion dollar deal. Jeez. So there you have it. It's wild. That is insane. Mm-hmm. So are the shareholders then happy? They're very happy. I mean, right? I mean, their, like, their stock was plummeting, uh, and this came out of nowhere, and now they, and get, they get a sell at uh, 54% higher than what the stock was even worth. It's, it's an insanely good deal. They had to take it. That's why you invest, mm-hmm. yeah, to, to see yep. an opportunity yep. like that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, all the shareholders got, you know, essentially bought out. They all made money. Um, now they no longer have ownership. Nope. And it's under his his reign. Here's that tweet. I think it came out April 16th. With Jack Jack Dorsey, co-founder of Twitter, who's still on the board, and he owned uh, just over 2%, I believe. With Jack departing, the Twitter board collectively owns almost no shares. So its economic interests are not aligned with shareholders. Then Dorsey replied, it's consistently been the dysfunction of the company. So Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, is actively aligning with Elon. And he straight up said, I think for this company to be saved and to turn back into what I envisioned it to be, uh, we need Elon to buy it and take it private. Well, Mm -hmm. where did it get lost then? Like, because it got so big or where was the disconnect you had w- just one side of the aisle making all the decisions on what could be what could be said what could be shared and how it could be said or shared uh, a couple of topics one that really rubs me the wrong way was january 6 when all that stuff was happening in dc and, and trump was trying to do his thing he, i mean i'm not being a trump apologist uh, but he was the largest uh, voice on twitter he had the most followers at the time and he was trying to get a story out over over Twitter, and they just straight up deleted his account. How Our active president gets kicked off of Twitter. However, Al-Qaeda still has an active account. Yeah. Like, right. what is going on? Yeah. How can Al-Qaeda have an account and yeah. say, death to America, this, that, and everything else, uh, but our president doesn't have an account, yeah. especially when something's happening like that? Yeah. And that it, scared the hell out of me. And And it's not like that was in any kind of secret. Like, everyone knew that. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's so weird how our society like so quickly forgets things or just turned into a punchline. It was funny. Or yeah. Or like looks over stuff like Mm -hmm. that because it's, that's absolutely unacceptable. I watched a little bit of Jimmy Fallon a day later, like January 7th or 8th. And he goes, of course, he has to lead with Donald Trump, make fun of the orange man. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he goes, (laughs) former Twitter influencer, Donald Trump. And the crowd just, ha 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 ha. I'm like, that's not funny. That is scary as hell to me. (laughs) Yeah. Like the guy that used to have the loudest voice on Twitter just gets kicked off for 
Yeah. For I don't even know what reasons. You know. Yeah. It's it, it's hard to to comprehend how everyone has just like gone gone along with it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and not really gotten crazy. But well, I think people were getting crazy, but we weren't allowed to hear those people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then it, you know, it takes, unfortunately, this kind of money yeah, in order to turn these things around. And this is, I wanted to kind of get your guys' perspective on, on this as well. Um, I mean, how do you feel that just one guy, a billionaire, right, can just buy something like Twitter and now it's really his way or the highway. Like yeah. he gets to, he gets to run all the controls. So, I mean, you were talking about shadow banning and this and that. I mean, Elon can do it, and there's no repercussions because yeah. now it's not a publicly yeah. traded company. Yeah. I I mean, I look at it a couple of different ways. One, I've always said that a private company essentially can do whatever they want to do. Yes. I mean, it's their company. They mm-hmm. can make the decisions. Right. If they don't want XYZ politician on their platform or whatever, mm-hmm. it's, their, it's their decision. Yes. And just like anything else, you can um, – not be on it if you don't want to. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you're not being forced to yeah. log in. Although there's some things like Twitter that have become such a beast that you, you a lot of times you don't really have that choice anymore because you got to be a part of it because it's yeah. there's so much going on. But uh, the point is to answer your question is I think as a private company, they can do whatever the heck they want. And if he does stuff that, that we don't like, you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Choose to be part of it or not. As a publicly traded company... I don't believe that they should be allowed that kind of flexibility and that kind of decision making power because yeah. it's at that point it's it more resembles uh you know a society with a government than anything else. It really like was. that government is supposed to be a yeah. representative of the people. Yeah. That uh board is supposed to be a representative of the shareholders. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. pull the shareholders, find out what they want <laughs> exactly. and make the decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's one of the things that I wanted to get into here to talk about a little bit is these this whole concept of these publicly traded companies and stockholders and all that. I've worked in corporate jobs mm-hmm. for publicly traded companies. And I quickly found out at a very young age that in my opinion, the publicly traded model was an absolute disaster. Hmm. And there's a number of reasons why I felt that way, but the primary reason – was because what it did to the motivation of the company. Okay. So the motivation then becomes, or at least they always said it was, is that every move we make, it has to be in the best interest of the shareholder, and that best interest is their profit. Yes. So it was always in the best interest of profit, no matter what. Yeah, And you see that a lot where it's a nice company, it's grown, it's grown, it's grown, it goes public, and now, okay, let's take like um, Goodyear Tires, for example. Now their number one priority since they've gone public, and this happened years ago, uh, it's not to make the best tire; it's to make the most profit per right. share for the right. shareholders. Yep. You know that, that's two so different the direction things. Direction changes. changes. Yes, in, in a sense, and it's, and, yeah, and it's by design. I mean, it's okay. that, that's the way that they're set up. So they have to answer to their shareholders, and they have to continually drive share value. And in order to do that, they got to figure out. In most cases, it comes to a point of, well, what can we cut? And yeah. that's usually what ends up happening. So you run in, you, you you see these scenarios one after another after another, where these companies will go in and do these massive layoffs mm-hmm. because they got to increase profitability. Yeah. When the people that are there pulling the triggers know that morally and for the long run, mm-hmm. it's not the right decision. Right. But to hit that number for the next quarter, yeah. this is what we're going to do. And that's Have what to. it all becomes about is these numbers and profitability. Yep. And it's, to me, it's disgusting. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times what happens, let, let's just go back to Goodyear for a reference. And I, and I, that, that's just for an example. And I'm not saying any of this is true. I but, mean, we could list off company right. after company after company. So one of the ways that companies will do that to make that number work, they'll start cutting deals. So rather than making the best tire possible, like they had for years and years and years, they'll make a cheap knockoff product of themselves and get in line with a Walmart and start selling tires at Walmart or something like that. And now, now you're devaluing your brand mm-hmm. and now Definitely. you're, now you're selling a, a cheap piece of garbage at a place where it sells only cheap stuff. It's like, Whoa, what's going on here? You know, yeah. that's not the core of a lot of these businesses or what got them to that point. It's all in the name of profitability. Yep. And that's, that's bottom line what it comes down to. So rather than making decisions based on what's right for the long run, 
what's right for our employees, what's right for our customers, what's right for our brand reputation. Mm -hmm. The decision then first is, well, what's right for profitability? And then yeah. let's think about those other things. And that's what I hate about it. So what I, what I love about this whole Twitter situation is that for so long, this whole publicly traded model has been uh, – like, like the thing, it's like the, it's, it's like the greatest thing ever in everyone's sure. mind. Like if you, when you get to a point when you can go public, you can take your company do public, it, man, it. you've, you've made it now. Yeah. You know what yep. I mean? Ring that bell. Yep. But in my mind, it's, I've always thought to myself, if you can get to that point, you're just, you're just giving up. Like not, not to say that you shouldn't, but mm -hmm. this isn't what people always talk about it. This isn't some great, awesome achievement. This is you're handing your company over and now yeah. you are, you, you're, you're deciding that profit is more important than anything. Else. I was just going to say reaping the benefit, like you're but getting money. Yeah. But as a, as a capitalist and let's say I'm ready to get out of this game or whatever it is. Um, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with going public. It's your, it's your company mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do. Yeah. But then that's like you said, give up might be kind of harsh. You just want to cash out. You want to reap your rewards. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. And my, my point is, is that call it what it is. Okay. You know, Agree. Be, it's fine if that's what yeah. you want to do, but call it what it is. Yeah. You know, you're, yep. you're, you're change at that point, you're changing what your primary motivations are. Yep. yep. Um, so again, so this has been kind of like the, the best thing ever, you mm -hmm. know, if, if you have a publicly traded company, so people, you know, are all looking up to these companies. Meanwhile, I'm sitting back here thinking, these people, this is ridiculous how these companies are being run and, and they think they're invincible. Yeah, they do. And they, they don't, well, even this Twitter board, they just thought that they didn't have to answer anybody. We can shadow ban whoever we want. And they got away with it for a very yep. long time. Yep. And this, this is the case with a lot of publicly traded companies. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how but, Enron happened. That is exactly how Enron happened. Yeah. It had nothing yeah. to do with the truth, had nothing to do with the company actually producing energy. It all had to do with Hitting that number. Propping up stock numbers. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Anybody can go. I mean, if, if you're interested, like if you if you don't quite agree with what I'm saying or don't quite understand it, go to Netflix <laughs> and watch that Enron documentary. That's wild. What was it like the, the smartest guy in the room or something like that? Isn't uh, that what they called it? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I did a lot of um, – so I got – Two bachelors of science in business management and business marketing, oh, and shoot. Uh, Look one at of them. You. Oh, I know, big time. Fancy oh, pants. BS. <laughs> it's an actual BS degree. Right. You're so <laughs> uh, full of BS. But uh, I did a few different types of uh, capstone studies and and whatnot over Enron, and that is just a fascinating of uh, story of how shareholders and trying to make shareholders happy just got way out of control. I can't say that I've seen that. You've watched it's that, wild. Ben? Oh, yeah. Shoot. So uh, one of the quick that? fallouts here that I wanted to touch on, and, and you kind of got into it when you started a little bit down the political road there, um, and this is from the uh, website, and it's been confirmed on other uh, different publications, but this one is from uh, techcrunch.com, and the headline reads, Twitter confirms fluctuations in follower accounts after Musk deal was announced were organic. Oh, please. I mean, so mm -hmm. even, yeah, then it, yeah <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's such a kosher word, so, organic. So here, here's a great example. April 25th, day after it happened, Mark Hamill, left-leaning actor, right? Mm -hmm. Weird. This is what he tweets out. Weird. I just lost more than 8,000 followers in the last couple of hours. Was it something I said? Question mark. And that follows suit with a lot of other uh, left-leaning, um, liberal uh, type of people that were influencers on Twitter. They were losing thousands upon thousands of followers. On the other side, this is wild. Uh, Republicans were gaining followers um, Taylor Green, Republican Taylor Green, uh, uh, had 539,000 followers the day before the deal was announced. And now she has over 660,000 followers. So someone then, so literally in that amount, in one day's time, one day time, Elon came in, messed with algorithm, like so the, the How, the theory is there's a lot of things yeah. going on here, but Twitter's standing from like, oh, we didn't tamper with anything. It's just fluctuations Please. happening organic. So, um, and it's so vast and one sided. It is all people that had Republican um, thoughts and ideas, and and on that side of the party, uh, they gained followers yeah. and 
liberals and Democrats lost followers. There was no, oh, well, this guy lost and this guy gained, but they're both, uh, you know, similar people. No, it was just straight down the line. People on the right gained followers and people on the left lost followers. So it, it, it looks worse than it's just bots. It looks like this was actually designed by people within Twitter. Okay. And if nothing else, Republicans were at least getting shadow banned. Yeah. Not allowing the actual number of followers to be seen or heard or even developed. Oh, and so they it, might have had them. Yeah. But it wasn't visible. Well, they would visible. have if Twitter would have allowed it. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the shadow banning I thing. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And, and I mean, we've all done that where uh, for your business or whatever. I mean, we have anyway. Where you you put together this great post on, let's say, Facebook, and you're like, this is going to kill it. This is a funny video. It checks all the boxes. And then out of our 5,000 followers, we get 102 likes. Like, what is going on? Yeah. What is going on? This should this should have at least got, you know, two or 3,000 likes just because we have 5,000 followers. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's a, a form of what you would feel is shadow banning, not allowing all your followers to see it or well, even Well, that's what I it. think yeah. of it, but I didn't think it would actually be people, so, they actually have followers, mm-hmm. but they're not. They, Twitter wasn't even allowing them to like yeah. be seen or, yeah. or heard or even even recognizing them on the platform. Okay. Um, but so now you're getting a true, now you, what what happened, <laughs> what what I think happened, I don't, you know, I'm just reading these articles, you know, trying to figure it out. Uh, to me, it looked like um, before Elon dives in and checks all this stuff out, they knew the people that worked at Twitter, okay, we got to set this right. Yeah. We, we got we to gotta get rid of these bots. We got to get rid of the shadow banning. Um, otherwise, we're all going to be fired. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you or, know? or worse, you yeah. know, there yeah. could be some kind of legal of course. ramifications. Um, yeah, you're, we're totally pulling the the blind back yeah, here and being yeah. allowed to see what this platform actually should be. And there's like. been stories. I mean, there's obviously a lot of stories about a lot of things, but you're talking about stuff like that where basically they're scrambling to kind of get rid of the evidence. Mm-hmm. There's stories of them, um, you know, shredding, shredding documents, yeah. getting rid of all kinds of files, like Jeez. trying to get this stuff out of here before – uh, before, before Elon the gets in there. shows up. Yeah, before yeah. the authority shows yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, here we go. This is just hilarious to me. Okay, so uh, Donald Trump was the largest influencer. He had the most followers on Twitter. Well, guess who had it <laughs> the most followers? Uh, April 24th, and that quickly changed April 25th. Barack Obama yeah. <laughs> had the most followers at over 300,000. <laughs> Oh, and then, um, and then you know, then he lost a few hundred thousand followers a day later. Um, same with like Katy Perry; she would once in a while throw out a left-leaning, you know, uh, tweet that would get a lot of traction, a lot of run. Uh, she lost more than two hundred thousand followers. Wow! There's so many games that can be played with those things. You know, when you think about it, I mean, Barack Obama, just real quick, he yeah. lost over three hundred thousand followers to to throw the number on that. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you think about it, like the general public, um, you know, is attracted to things that are shiny mm-hmm. and and attracted to things that they feel like a lot of other people are attracted to. So just the simple number that says how many followers you have. Yeah, the blue check mark. Yep. Can completely influence people to want to know what that person's doing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So let's say you have, let's say you legitimately have 500,000. But instead, Twitter makes that number say a million. Mm-hmm. It makes you that much more attractive to people coming in. Of course, it does. You know what I mean? It's, yes, it, it's, yes, it does. It's just it's simple so things like that. It's you so know what I mean? Dumb. And that's and that's a number that probably in one way or another they could defend. You know, like they could be sure. like if someone really drove them, they could be like, well, you know, I mean, there's all these bots out there that are running around just clicking on things. Mm-hmm. It's probably a bunch of those. You know, we don't control that, or you know what I mean. But yeah. the point is, is that just just in a simple change of a number like that can be so influential. So Big when you time. start realizing, like how you're fake. manipulating, you're yeah, manipulating yes. the real story. 100%. That is yeah. the word. And when overnight, former President Barack Obama loses over three hundred thousand followers, that that should just send sirens mm-hmm. ringing mm-hmm. in your head. That mm-hmm. wow, this was bad. What was going on at Twitter was really, really bad. Did Trump get put back on Twitter yet? Now that's another okay. side story and some fallout there. Yeah, so. Uh, Trump started his own social media called Truth Social. Yes, I've heard that. And he's trying he's trying to get that built up and rival, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and it's it's just not happening, you know. Um 
and he was, I believe he was invited back on Twitter, but he came out and said, no, I'll never go back on Twitter. I think he will, you know. Him and I, Musk will probably get he tight. He probably well, should and just say, hey, without I, Elon here, I right. was trying to build this thing. Now you're here and let's all get back. But so he's he hasn't rejoined as of today. I think he will. Uh, okay. And I think he should. Um, but it's not that he wasn't invited. Okay. I didn't right. know that. So one thing that I want to go back to just to bring some closure to um, when I was talking about, you know, the public rate publicly traded companies and mm-hmm. their vulnerabilities and stuff like that. Just for clarification, number one, that Enron documentary is the smartest guys in the room, and it looks like it's not on Netflix anymore. Oh. But you can find it on about anything else, Amazon, YouTube, whatever, but definitely worth the watch. Um, and I saw something on here real quick that I thought was interesting. It was a, a quick write-up uh, about the documentary, and it says um, – in a hyper-competitive market, Enron traders resort to all kinds of underhanded dealings in order to make money at any cost and keep their high-paying jobs. This is the yeah. moral of the story, man. Yeah, this yeah. is what goes on with these things. Yep. Um, so back to Musk and Twitter. Again, he revealed the the weaknesses in this publicly traded system. Yes, he did. And it took, unfortunately, somebody with a lot of money, mm-hmm. but who seems to be a decent dude, came in and said, you guys think you're untouchable? I'll show you. Yep. Here, I'll show here you. we go. Yeah. $54.20 a share. Yeah. And he, pl- <laughs> he played the system that they built, the system that yep. they thought was untouchable mm-hmm. and that they could control everybody and everything that they want to with, and he wrecked it. Now, yep. can you imagine how many of these other publicly traded companies out there are sitting in boardrooms going, oh my whoa, God. whoa, now what are we going to do? Yeah. How do we get ready for something like this? Yeah. Do you th- and it's part of the game, though. It's part of the game. Do you think he's just sitting there drinking and laughing and thinking, I don't think like, I uh, played doing. him? <laughs> and I saw that, oh, God, I thought he was 40. He looks young. Um, it said 50. That's what it says online Shoot. here, yeah. I mean, everything online is true, duh. It's Yeah, it's online. I mean, it's true. It's on it's, Twitter. It's true. It says he's 50. <laughs> he's 50. Now, uh, yeah, so you know, there's, there's – uh, you know, you want to go down conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I mean, there's a, a pretty good thread out there that – that Elon's an alien, and I think maybe there's some <laughs> there's some credibility to that. Just, he has psychic abilities dude, or something. Just just watch his interviews and how his eyes kind of shift around and Do how they? he moves back and forth. Like I just I'm just saying he just when he, usually when a person looks up to the left, they're searching for an answer, kind of showing you that maybe they're lying or maybe mm-hmm. they're they're looking for something. His eyes are always kind of moving back and forth and all around and. I I feel when he's doing that, it's because he's trying to break down his answer into a form that I could consume and, and understand. Mm-hmm. I think he is there's a there's a gap there. If you're twenty points IQ, you know, higher than the next guy, you'll have trouble dumbing down your speech so they can understand what you're saying. You know, that's mm-hmm. why y- mm-hmm. y- you you just kind of naturally fall into packs. You are who you keep. Yeah. And I think he's when he's looking when he's looking up at the ceiling and looking down and stuff. I think that's what's going through his head is how can I dumb this down for this host of this show <laughs> that asked me this question that he will be able to understand. He's it. processing that, and right. trying to. That's what I think relate. he's doing. I don't think he's trying to build a, a story or a line or something like that. When you watch, you know, his interviews and those documentaries and stuff like that. I mean, he, the dude is not your typical, mm-hmm. you know, high flutin' CEO. You know what I mean? Like, right. He's <laughs> he's well spoken, but he's not. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. a lot of times, he doesn't know what oh, he, to say. He just calls a spade a spade. Yeah, yeah. and and he. You know, you that documentary that just came out. You you mentioned you had watched it where uh, they're going to space or whatever they yeah, call SpaceX. it. Yeah, SpaceX. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. about SpaceX, but I can't remember what they call it. Um, there's a lot of him in there in just real time. The cameras are following him around, mm-hmm. and you see him talk to his people and you know congratulating them for what they accomplished and so on and so forth. And it's honestly a little awkward, mm-hmm. you know, the way that he talks to him, but they get it, you mm-hmm. know, and they can they can see that he knows he yeah. has a vision, he knows what's going on. And a big difference with him is when he reads a book, he retains it all and he keeps it. He Jeez. keeps that knowledge. Uh, so, like, he just kind of self-taught himself how to build a rocket, what what is needed to build a rocket to go to outer space. And, like, he under, he, he's not an astronaut and he's not at that level, but, man, he picks – he he understands more than most. Well, and he's smart. I mean, he hired, you know, the best of the best. He did. Yep. To be on his team, yep. to yeah. you know the engineers and so on and so forth to build mm-hmm. those systems. But don't you think someone that's like that to me is more real and relatable? So I maybe he, is, he yeah. can't. I, mean, yeah. psh, I don't speak amazingly, but you know, I mean, I just maybe he can't articulate things 
so great, but it, he is just it, a brilliant man. Just to go back, it just kind of gives credence into like, well, maybe this dude is an alien. Because, <laughs> I mean, how is he able to accumulate so much wealth, get electric cars to work, get Americans to buy it in? Isn't that kind of a funny back True. and forth, too? Like, your, your leftist-leaning liberals in California like, oh, I drive a Tesla. I love the environment. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, uh, starting in mid-April, oh, death to Elon. What a terrible guy <laughs> trying to yeah. ruin yeah. Twitter. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just kind of funny that uh, you, they really had to change gears there and shift it. And it's like, wait, I – I have an Elon Musk T-shirt that that I really like. I'm gonna have to throw that away now. I yeah, guess. <laughs> yeah. And it's also funny when you think about it. You know, if you try to get in his mind, I mean, most business people, you know, that are gonna be making a decision like that, they're gonna mm-hmm. be thinking, "Well, I don't want to um, cause any damage to what I built over here at at Tesla and with right. all this following uh-huh. by making this move." And they're so left leaning. Yeah. yeah. But in his mind, he's just like, "Nope, this is the right thing to do, and yeah. this is what we're gonna do." Uh, and he just says, like, dumbing it down, he just straight up says it, and I'll go back to this tweet on March 25th. Free speech is essential to a functioning democracy. Mm-hmm. How can you argue with that? You mm-hmm. can't. There is no argument. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, even I, people on both sides of the aisle, that is something you have to rally behind. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe uh, getting too derogatory or this or that, you know, in his TED Talk uh, before a lot of this madness happened – you know, he said, if there's any gray to it, you got to allow that to stay out there. You know, don't take that away. That gray area allows this conversation to develop, to figure out what's right, what's wrong, what's acceptable in your society. And this whole free speech thing, he's not saying we should be able to just say outlandish things and bash people. No, he's saying what is allowed by the law, the letter of the law, free speech. That should be allowed. That's yeah. all he's sure. asking for yep. here. That's yep. That was his number one goal. And getting back to what you're saying with public companies, their goals get misaligned with what the company Absolutely. is and what it's supposed to be or what it was. I think Elon's going to bring Twitter back to what it's supposed to be. I think, once again, he's brilliant. Uh, if it was publicly traded, its stock would skyrocket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And maybe he will do that. Who knows? You uh, send it back public if he thinks he yeah. sets it back right. Yeah. yeah. Um, whatever he does, I I almost feel like you got to get behind it because yeah, he's just ahead of the game. Yeah. In so many facets. We uh, we're we're gonna run out of time pretty soon here, but uh, one other thing, you know, we've pointed out a, a lot of really good things that he's doing, and and I agree with most of what he's done. Mm-hmm. Um. One of the big things that he's working on as well, just in, in the fact that we're talking about Elon Musk, is uh, these like implanted chips in brains. Have you read on any uh, of that? I've touched in on that, and I've watched a one. Uh, no. There's a couple Black Mirror episodes I've seen that yeah. has those chips. I'm like, this is wild. He he, no. the guy, and I've heard interviews with him on this topic from some of the other big podcasters, mm-hmm. um, and he firmly believes that he's going to be able to get there. And, and essentially to where there will be chips in brains where we can communicate with each other without even talking. Right. Like and, we're going to be able to communicate our thoughts with chips. Now, this guy has come out with crazy ideas that we've all seen come to fruition at this point. Mm-hmm. And this seems like one of those really crazy ideas. Like, come on, man. He's probably going to do it. He's going to yeah. do it. And it's going to freak me out. It's going to freak a lot of people out. <laughs> well, and uh, another uh, another one yeah. of those things, not that wild, uh, but he's talking about an automated car. So you just type in destination, the car drives you there. And, and in some facets, that's already happening. Yeah. But he's like, no, it's I'm going to make it happen, and it's going to be efficient, and it's going to get people. There's going to be zero crashes. And I'm like, oh, he's probably right. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Domino's uh, already do that? Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, right? <laughs> With the little delivery thing. Yeah. Um, um, but this, I think it was Ted again, trying to interview him on that. And he started getting into automation and, and robots and he goes, it's going to be so much bigger than cars. Like get your mind off of just cars driving around. This is going to be automated robots taking care of grandma, getting her tea, waking her up in the morning, all these things. And then of course your mind goes, well, what else can these robots do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, scary, it's scary stuff. <sighs> yeah. Guys, that makes me think of the movie I Robot. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the stuff that these guys oh. say has already been done in movies. Like, so it's, it's already been shown yeah. to us. Uh, and he said that in that SpaceX. He goes, "I want to make science fiction, not fiction." Yeah. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> oh, but we were going to talk about, or we had talked about at the shop here. We have the satellite or the Skylink or what's it called the yeah we we yeah kind of with the, with, with the spacex program Spa- we, yeah. we've got the uh, starlink starlink internet. yeah so and, that's been and, awesome yeah i mean that's been a, a benefit yeah. 
directly from him that from we have one. right here at this shop yeah. that we're using right now um, yeah. f- for help with this podcast. Without that, I mean, we're in rural America and there's a lot of rural folks listening to this podcast. Without that, we would have little to no internet service here right now. And, and dumb it down. He just saw a problem and he fixed it. Yeah. Yep. And the technology was already there. Just no one could get it done or didn't want it to get done because they're a publicly traded company yep. or whatever. Yep. You know, yep. they're limiting access to internet. And Elon's like, nah, it shouldn't be the way it is. If yeah, if they want internet, they should have it. Everyone else has it. Why and not? here, I'll just build a little satellite and we'll mm-hmm. – and uh, just another – multi-million dollar company that he was just able to create and get off the ground and run. And it's like, how how does he do this stuff? Yeah. How? Yeah. We had a hard time running this place for what? Six, seven, eight months yeah. without yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it was a nightmare. We were trying to run on a cell signal that was no. absolute junk. And yep. then along comes this beta test for Starlink and yep. we signed up. Boom. Super easy to install. And yeah. here we are. Uh, and and you, you quoted some of the... Uh, your references there. I want to do the same. So I got a lot of this information from techcrunch.com and also the, the timeline came from ndtv.com. They have a whole list of uh, up-to-date stuff, what's going on with Elon, not only on Twitter, but I, I feel these two are very credible sources. Yeah, for sure. So that's I just want to get that out of there if people want to take a little bit deeper dive into what's going on. Yeah, I wasn't going to quote my sources. It's Morgan Evers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Doug, What's oh. your Twitter handle? <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I didn't have any sources today, people. What uh, to, to close it out? What do we have anything else on uh, on the whole Twitter topic? Like what? Uh, do you have anything else down? Or well, I guess maybe what's next for them? I yeah. mean, it seems like robots. Well, I think what's what's going to happen next is there's going to be a lot more clarity, just clarity yeah. to what's going on. Um, and you'll see true numbers. So if uh, this celebrity sends out a tweet and nobody cares about it, it's not going to get any traction. It, there's not going to be this false following of, you know, a million, as you put it, like a million followers. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to see that type of stuff. Um, and I do think in time you probably will see old Donald J. Trump get mm-hmm. back on the platform, but he's kind of playing his game right now, trying to get his own thing going. I know mm-hmm. for me personally and for our business, um, you know, we do a fair amount on social media and social media is exhausting for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and thinking about other platforms that we're not super active on, like Twitter or uh, mm-hmm. TikTok or whatever, um, with everything that's been happening lately with this, it's definitely given me some motivation to get more and more on Twitter. I want to, I want to yeah. see it. I want to know what's going on. And I kind of, in the back of my mind, I kind of feel like it's going to be a little more fair now. Right. Where before I felt like it wasn't fair. So kind of what's the point? I don't want to get in on it. So I know from a, from a personal standpoint, that's my perspective. And that may be the case with a lot of people around the, around the country here. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to, I feel like what I said at the beginning, not just watching the news, but getting news from different sources. I just didn't seem very attractive to me. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'd Mm -hmm. rather look at pictures. Okay, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, whatever things. But I do want to know what's going on around me. And it just seems so one sided. It was disgusting, honestly. So I didn't, I just want a full picture. So I think even myself, I would like to get more back on Twitter. And so a great way to go about that is go ahead and get on Twitter and follow CNN, follow Fox News. And now you're going to get, when something happens, you're going to get Two sides of the story, right? For lack of a better oh, term, but that's a good idea. You're gonna Fox News will send out a tweet, and CNN will send out a tweet, and you'll get to kind of break it down like you should be able to. Okay, you know, and decide for yourself. Okay, what's actually happening here? Now, what it was, you would only see CNN. Fox News would even get kicked off of Twitter at times if they yeah. just straight up would. Tr- they, I mean, they everyone had to watch what they said and how they said it yeah. on Twitter, and you're seeing a lot of that on these other platforms right now, and you're not gonna see it on Twitter. Uh, moving forward here with Elon, and I I think that's a, uh, I think it's a really good thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. That was interesting. Um, You know, from a standpoint of common folk, uh, since we've been recording and getting the episodes out, um, we've had a couple Mm -hmm. of developments with, uh, with where all, where all we're at, right? So Andy's handling kind of the producing and, and where you can get the common folk podcast, you know, traditionally everyone's got the the Spotify, yeah, the, Spotify the Apple, and iTunes. iTunes. And yeah, I mean, we are growing faster than 
you know, the universe right now. We're expanding yeah. fast. <laughs> we're like the Elon Musk of, oh, of podcasts, oh. of common podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, but we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We were on those big three early on. Now we're on Stitcher, TuneIn, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and I think shortly here we're going to be on Pandora Podcast. So how about that? It's pretty cool, cool. stuff. Yeah. It is cool. So people can find us in a lot of areas. So um, definitely, you know, we need uh, people to subscribe. Yep. That's that's huge. That's one of the numbers that get followed, and that helps us. And uh, and any chance you get to leave comments, good or bad, let yeah. us know what you think about the conversation. Those have been some of our best conversations when we see something on Facebook getting back to you guys mm -hmm. or Farm Focus mm -hmm. and saying, well, what about this or what happened there? Those mm -hmm. are yeah. some of our best episodes, some of our best conversations. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and this is not all based on looks, right? Because we're not even video. I mean, not, this is voices. Not yet. Not yet. Coming. Guys. It's coming. Yep. I mean, you guys are handsome, so oh. wait till I go live, you know? Yeah. Jeez. Well, cool. <laughs> Anything I like else? It. I don't think so. I no. think I mean I I like that we covered this. Uh, I didn't put a common folk perspective yeah. on kind of a big tech, yeah, social media type. I of learned deal. a lot. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Good deal. Okay. All right. Well, until next time. Later. Peace.